Hello, Northwest Calvaryman here, and today I'm going to be cleaning my Marlin Model 60 semi-automatic firearm. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to remove the stock from your your firearm, your Model 60, so that you can get the chamber and the barrel off and get into the action of the firearm. So you do that by removing two Allen screws from the stock, one up in the forestock, and then one right behind the trigger guard. Just uh, screw them off and take them out and then your action is going to come right off of the stock, your action and your barrel. So just remove those, put them aside and you will see that this uh, comes right apart. Just give it a little bit of a of a pull there. You lift up from the front, uh, the back actually uh, comes off second. And you can see inside that the trigger assembly, that part of the trigger assembly is still in the stock, but a lot of the trigger assembly has come out with the, uh, with the action and the barrel. So now that you've got that out, what you need to do is you need to take the trigger assembly and the uh, bolt out. And all you do is there is this little piece, um, plastic piece, you kind of squeeze and pull it out. And then there's two little hooks on the front of the trigger assembly that just hook into the little uh, uh, knobs at the front. Just lift it right out and then you have your 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 slide your bolt um, it's a bolt not a slide and you just kind of push it back and pull it up now you pull out this uh, guide rod and spring and the f the final thing that comes out is the charging handle so now you have your gun fully disassembled it didn't take all that long and it was actually quite easy just two screws to unscrew and then um, you know, this little plastic retaining bolt that you squeeze and pull out. Now what you want to do now is uh, inspect your firearm, all the pieces that go with it, just to make sure that they're in uh, good working order and see how dirty they are. Now what I like to do is take G96. G96 is a is a CLP, a cleaning lubricant and protectant. And I like to use it quite liberally inside the chamber and the barrel and the where the action uh, case basically and uh, on all of the pieces. So I'm going to spray quite a bit down the barrel and I'm going to let it soak in a little bit. 22 caliber firearms are particularly dirty and when you're shooting lead ammunition through them uh, they do get a little bit of lead fouling as well so you want to maybe leave the uh, G96 in there a little bit then you want to spray down the bolt carrier and you want to spray down the trigger assembly as well and just kind of leave it sit there for a while just to soak in spray it in now G96 is kind of like uh, ballast all if you've ever watched any of the Hickok 45 videos you'll uh, see them using ballast all sometimes and uh, it, it doesn't have the licorice smell but uh, I, I like this G96 I've tried the ballast all as well but I kinda like the G96 and it does treat your metal I've actually used it to on uh, handcuffs to get them uh, that are that were a little bit too uh, too tight so now that I've got all it uh, liberally sprayed down and waited a, a little bit, now I'm going to start to take a nylon brush and uh, clean inside the uh, the uh, the case of where the action is. And if I if I have to, I can take a bronze brush as well. But really, a nylon brush seems to work quite well. That's all I kind of need. This gun isn't all that dirty. There's only been uh, maybe a hundred rounds put through it probably not even that since I last cleaned it 
So now I'm going to take that same nylon brush and I'm going to clean off the bolt. Get it all that nice and clean. Clean off the extractor area. And just generally give it a good good clean down. Now uh, I'll also uh, working on the trigger assembly now and gotta wipe it on down afterwards. G96 will leave a bit of a kind of a greasy feeling film on the, the firearm. You can on the internal parts uh, you just wipe it off and, and don't get uh, you know too worried about leaving a little bit of a film because uh, that will act as a lubricant. Now inside uh, after I get it all wiped down and and uh, scrubbed out with the nylon brush, I usually like to take some Q-tips and get right in the little uh, grooves and crevices that I can get into, so that uh, it gets nice and clean. As again, this was in wasn't all that dirty, so I don't need to spend too much time actually on the the bolt carrier. Uh, you do want to get inside the, the cavity where the action sits. Get that nice and clean too and also uh, you want to clean off the charging handle. Then just give it all a, a really good wipe down with a, with a rag. This uh, shop rag that I have uh, that's been used for a few cleanings. You can see that it does have a little bit of uh, grime on it, but for the most part, it's uh, it, you know it's still good. You can it'll actually have a, a bunch of uh, G96 on it, so it cleans it off pretty pretty good. And afterwards, uh, after we're finished, we're going to give it a wipe down with some paper towel, some clean paper towel that uh, you want as as lint free as possible. Now, before we get to that part, I'm going to do the barrel. Now, the barrel, what I like to use is these bore snakes. And what you do is you drop it down into the chamber and feed it right down the bore of uh, the firearm until the, uh, the weighted end comes out the front. And you just pull it on through. Some people say you only have to do this once. I like to do it... Uh, about three or four times, usually about four times is good. Now these bore snakes, they do have some bristles on them. They work as a bore brush and then the material as it gets pulled through it uh, gets a little thicker at the end and it just wipes away a lot of the the grime that's inside the barrel and sometimes this is all you need. It's always a good idea. Now some of the more traditional ways of cleaning is to use a, a patch uh, holder on the end of a cleaning rod and just uh, put it through the bore. Now in this case I can't get at the breech with the cleaning rod so I'm going through the muzzle. It's always best if you can feed your cleaning rod through the breech but sometimes you do have to go through the muzzle. Now you're going to run patches through until till they're clean. Uh, and if they're you don't get it all clean and you think that, well, maybe you need to clean a bit more, give it another soak down with some G96 and let it soak for a little while. At this point, uh, if you're not satisfied with how it is, uh, you know, you've done, you've done your boar snake and uh, you've checked it with a patch, you might want to go the more traditional route by putting a bore brush on when the barrel has been soaked in G96 or some other solvent. Sometimes you want to get into the old hops, uh, 90, uh, hops number nine, or hoppies number nine, however you want to pronounce it. So with the bore brush, you're going to want to feed that through and scrub out the inside of the bore uh, a few times and it will be fairly tight. 
If it's not, then your bore brush is probably worn out and you need to replace it. Go through several times and just and then afterwards you can put on another cleaning bit, a cleaning jag and run some patches through. Now you notice the patches that I'm using are quite small. I've cut them down so the, you can actually use the cleaning jag. Uh, they're about one-eighth the size of the original uh, pad. So you want to push these pads through and at this point you're looking to get the pad as clean as possible. So you'll push a number of pads through. Sometimes you will you can pull them out and uh, flip them over. So once you've got that bore as clean as you you want so there's, there's no grime coming out onto the cleaning pads you're going to want to wipe everything down with a paper towel. And then I like to use a little bit of lubricant. Now, as you notice, I said before, you don't need to use lubricant. I like to use lubricant just be on all the moving parts. Even though G96 is a cleaning uh, lubricant protectant, I like to, to use a little bit of gun lubricant. Now, you put your guide rod and spring into the end of your bolt and you, you slide it into place. You're going to have to leave it up a little bit so that you can put your charging handle in. Charging handle sits right there on top into a little slot on the top of your bolt, which of course looks like it's the bottom because uh, this is upside down. Now you want to move that forward a little bit and make sure the bolt is in place. Next comes the trigger assembly. Now there's two little hooks as I said before and there's a, a, little, a little posts that you just lever them on and then you just set your, your trigger assembly down. You, can, you do normally have to move the bolt back a little bit and it should sit right down on it. Then take your little plastic retaining bolt and put it through preferably the same way you took it out. And it just it holds everything in place. There's not as many screws as in the older versions, but it seems to work just fine. This is a very, very accurate gun. Haven't had any problems with it. Very satisfied with it. So at this point you could take a little bit of alcohol and wipe everything down to get the G96 off of the outside. Or if you're going to be storing it for a while you might just want to, to leave it as is so that the G96 forms a little bit of a film. Now you want to put your gun back together. So you, you do need to uh, put the the butt of the uh, the chamber or the back of the chamber in first and then lay the uh, the top down or the the forward part down then flip the gun over and reinsert the screws you want to do the finger tight and you want to make sure that they they thread in uh, just with your fingers because you don't want to to strip them after you've got, got them finger tight, then you want to take your Allen key and just uh, torque them down a bit. Now you don't want to use too much force, you just want it solid. And once you've got those tightened up, you're done. You're finished. You've successfully cleaned your Marland Model 60. So the Marland Mar Model 60 is one of the most iconic guns uh, in you know uh, US history, Can Canadian history. They have been made for decades and they're they were probably one of the most popular semi-automatic 22s ever on the market. They came along uh, I think several decades before or at least several years before the uh, Ruger 1022, which argu arguably is the most popular uh, 22 semi-automatic, but 
this gun uh, has been people's favorite for years, for decades. And it is a very accurate gun. I would recommend this gun to anyone. For the price, it was under $300 when I bought it in 2017. Under $300. You can't beat a price like that for a gun that, that is that accurate. And that's with iron sights. It, it's just amazing. I did have a scope on it for a little while. I found that uh, the scope didn't really help me out because at the the ranges that I were shooting at and hunting grouse at, uh, it actually was a bit of a, a detriment. So I took the scope off. The iron sights are great. They are dead on. So I recommend the Marland Model 60 to anyone who is looking for a good, but, uh, accurate and inexpensive semi-automatic 22. If you like this video and found it informative, please like and subscribe. For now, this is Northwest Calvary Man signing off. Thank you very much for viewing.